Imagine something like this, but on an aircraft carrier. Except for, you don't need to imagine it, because the pit stop concept has been incorporated in the newest and most powerful aircraft carrier in the world. But to accomplish this, some things had to shrink, some things had to move, and some things had to be eliminated. The Gerald R. Ford class of supercarriers incorporates some of the most advanced technologies and design changes in the world, from electromagnetic catapults to a new propulsion plant design that requires fewer people to operate and maintain it, to eliminating one of its starboard side elevators. That last one reminds me of when Apple removed the headphone jack from the iPhone and called it a feature except for eliminating one elevator was actually beneficial. Now that I think about it, Apple no longer ships earbuds or wall chargers with their iPhones either. Soon the only thing we'll receive is a receipt, but in a premium package. The Ford class carriers can supposedly launch 25% more aircraft compared to the Nimitz class which translates to sustaining 160 sorties per day for 30 plus days with a surge capability of 270 sorties per day. And even though there are debates around the feasibility of these numbers, the bottom line is the sortie rates will be increasing. In terms of flight deck operations, once an aircraft lands, it's hooked up to a tow bar and then a tractor pulls it into a location where maintenance is performed. Then it's pulled to another location to get fueled. The required weapons are then loaded onto the aircraft before it goes to the catapults. Basically, the crew is constantly moving the airplanes around to prepare them for their next launch and recovery cycle. But all this moving around gets tricky when you're working in one of the most dangerous places in the world, with numerous aircraft landing, taxiing, or taking off in a relatively small area. And that is where the pit stop idea comes in. Instead of moving the aircraft around for different types of service, let's do as much as possible in one spot. But to create these pit stops, some space had to be freed up, and some stuff had to be relocated. An aircraft carrier's island is its command center for ship control and flying control. The one single place where decisions are ultimately made. Well, except for HMS Queen Elizabeth, that's got two islands. Not a surprise, however, since Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II also celebrates two birthdays every year. True story. And also historically, the British love islands. To make room for the pit stops, the island structure on the Ford class is only 60 feet long compared to the 100 foot long island on the Nimitz. Much of the size reduction was achieved by shrinking the various radar and communication antennas that are housed on top of the island. And that was accomplished by replacing rotating radar antennas with dual band phased arrays. Not only the island was made smaller, it also was moved, positioned 140 feet further aft and 3 feet further outboard compared to the island on the Nimitz class. This cleared more deck area for planes on the forward starboard part of the flight deck. When it comes to refueling aircraft on the deck of the Nimitz class carriers, Everything comes from the outside, from the far starboard side of the flight deck. That means running hoses all the way across the deck to different areas, to the extent that it prevents other aircraft from taxiing, which is a real choke point. Going over hoses when they're full of fuel is not the safest move after all. But on the fourth class, spaced out along the deck are 18 purple-edged 3x3 three three foot hatches. These are gas stations, making refueling a lot simpler. 
and they are conveniently located near the pit stops, where the rest of the service happens. But this next modification might be the most counterintuitive of them all. The elevators are used to move aircraft between the hangar bay and the flight deck. Even though elevators were originally located in the middle of the flight deck, it soon became obvious that the location of the elevators were suboptimal. If the elevator got stuck in the down position, it would leave a big hole in the flight deck, which would negatively impact flight deck operations. So in the 1930s, deck edge elevators were pioneered on USS Wasp, which also provided additional parking space outside the normal contours of the flight deck. But even with the deck edge elevators, the location could still impact sortie rates. For example, on USS Forstall, the port side deck edge elevator was located at the fore of the angled flight deck, next to the catapults, which severely limited flight operations whenever the elevator was in the down position. The future Kitty Hawk class solved this problem by moving it to the aft end of the angled deck. With the fourth class carriers, the elevators were relocated to make room for the pit stops. But things didn't stop at relocation. Over the years, the number of elevators increased from two to three and ultimately to four on the Nimitz class. The more elevators you have, the more quickly you can move aircraft between the hangar bay and the flight deck, which results in a higher sortie rate, right? But it's not what you think. The fourth class has three elevators, one less compared to the Nimitz class. That one elevator had to be sacrificed to make room for the pit stops, because the bottleneck was all the aircraft movements on the flight deck, not the elevator capacity. In fact, the location and number of aircraft elevators are an integral part of the new flight deck design with the pit stops. Less elevators, but higher sortie rates. Believe it or not, HMS Queen Elizabeth has no elevators. That's simply because in Britain, there are no elevator manufacturers. Instead, they make lifts. Interestingly, the pit stop was not the only thing that the US military borrowed from NASCAR. In 1997, Pro Tint, which is a removable windshield film, was installed on race cars. The Lexan glass was prone to chipping and scratches, and after several hundred miles, the sun's glare could create a white haze that would make it very difficult to see through. So this film was applied to the glass to protect it, and it could also be easily peeled off and replaced. The military had a similar problem with the glass on their Black Hawk helicopters being damaged by rocks and debris. So they ended up adopting a similar solution for their helicopters. Inspirations are all around us. But who would have thought that watching fast cars go in a circle 400 times would be so inspiring?